So at work I got asked the question about DHCP failover. What happens if the active server is no longer able to be recovered? How do you turn the hot spare into the active server? So we're going to do DHCP failover again and more. Okay, so spoiler alert, if you're watching this video and you haven't watched DHCP Failover Lab, you want to watch that video first to understand the entire scenario. What we present in this video is built on top of that scenario. Okay, so we're going to pretend to destroy Tucson DHCP1. This is the active server. We're just going to stop the service. We're going to uninstall DHCP. We're going to rename the server and change the IP address. So for all intents and purposes, it should be a new, different DHCP server, and we've lost Tucson DHCP1. So here you can see on Tucson DHCP2, we don't have any control over this failover configuration. I'm attempting to replicate the configuration of scopes, and DHCP1 is not available. I can't do anything to configure failover because I don't own any scopes as the hot standby and only 5% of the addresses are reserved for the hot standby for each scope. So let's look at this relationship. You can manage failover in the properties of IPv4. Okay, here we can see we've lost contact with the partner server and I'm gonna say the partner is down. I'm just trying to force myself into being the active server here on Tucson DHCP2. Trying to go to load balance mode and switch to 100%. No, that doesn't work because the other server isn't there. It won't let me do that. Hey, I searched for some documents on doing this and I couldn't find any readily. So I just figured I'd just go ahead and forge my way through it in the lab. So we have to stay in hot standby mode. Really can't do anything in this failover relationship properties here. So I've got a bright idea. I'm going to delete that failover relationship. Sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. Ready? Go. All right. The server is not in a normal state and may not communicate with the partner server. Do you still wish to continue? Yeah, let's do it. And off we go. All right. So we're no longer in a DHCP failover scenario here. We're still hosting this scope. I'm going to go see if I can pull a lease from this DHCP server. We'll fire up our Sync1 server here. Do an IP config, release, renew, and IP config all to confirm that. We're going to want to connect to the console because we're going to be essentially disconnecting and reconnecting the server from the network. So it won't do any good to try to reach Tucson Sync1 via RDP and do an IP config, release, renew. Just don't want to do that. Okay, there's our release, here's our renew, IP config all, and we see the DHCP server is 192.168.1.207, and we see we pulled a lease from DHCP2. So we can see DHCP2 is functioning as the DHCP server, and it's no longer in a failover relationship, so it's going to be the DHCP server at this point. Okay, let's bang on Tucson DHCP1. Like I said, we're going to rename it, change its IP address, and remove the DHCP service. Obviously, this is just a lab scenario. If we actually did lose Tucson DHCP1, we wouldn't be renaming Tucson DHCP1 and changing its IP address. We'd be building a new server. Reusing the old server in this lab scenario does introduce an interesting wrinkle. We'll see that later on. I'm afraid in the course of this video you'll learn more about DHCP failover than you'll ever want to. Okay, so we've removed the DHCP service from Tucson DHCP1. Renamed the server. And I'm going to cut corners here before I reboot for the rename. I'm going to go ahead and change the IP address too. And you'll see that gets kind of sticky here. Obviously changing the IP address is going to break my RDP session. 
So I'm going to try to get back in. That doesn't make much sense. Oh, and there's the dreaded no computer account for this workstation. So I'm just going to push a reboot in Hyper-V and I bet everything's going to be okay. All right, it's shut down. Okay, we're switching Tucson DHCP3 on again. All right, let's see if we can RDP in. Great, everything's just fine. So on the hot spare server in a DHCP failover scenario, just to refresh you from the previous video, we're just going to install the DHCP service and we're just going to authorize the DHCP server and that's it. When we add it as a hot spare in a DHCP failover scenario, all of the configuration is copied over from the active server automatically. Make sure to check for the links to all of the reference articles below. We're going to install and configure the service using PowerShell. Okay, install Windows feature. DHCP include management tools. Then NetShell DHCP add security groups. Then restart service DHCP server. When that comes back, then we're going to use add DHCP server in DC with the DNS name parameter TUS DHCP3 echo.local IP address 192.168.1.211. Then we can get a list of the DHCP servers, get DHCP server in DC. Then we're going to use this registry hack to clear the configure DHCP service flag. So we can see the DHCP is installed and then we got the notification saying DHCP is not configured. So we'll run the remainder of the script, authorizing the DHCP server. There we got our list of DHCP servers. You can still see DHCP1 was still in there and DHCP3 is in there. So now this should be a piece of cake, right? We just go to IPv4 configure failover. Ah, looks like we can select the scope that we needed. This is looking positive. So now we just need to pick the partner server. It's not in the list, so we're going to browse for it. So far, so good. Oh, no. Yeah, this is where reusing Tucson DHCP1 was a mistake because I didn't actually go in and delete the underlying DHCP database. So when you reinstall the service, the database is still there. It still thinks it's Tucson DHCP1. So we're going to have to figure out a way to back out of this. Hang on, it's going to get interesting. Yeah, that's that path to the files that I should have deleted. Now, I've never done this before. I don't think you have either. Let's go look at those files. Oh, and there's a bunch of them too. You can see there's files dating back to the old Tucson DHCP1 server and files with today's date. What about deleting the DHCP scope, you say? Oh, can't delete it. It's part of a failover relationship. So even that's recorded in that database. I can't delete the failover because the active server isn't there anymore. So that's not going to work. So now what do I do? I'll just break the MMC and crash it out. So my bright idea now is to stop the DHCP service on Tucson DHCP3 and delete all the underlying files from that folder. Let's see if we can get away with that. Stop the service. Delete all the files. Start the service. And everything's cool. We got rid of that pesky scope that was in that failover mode. And we just have a very vanilla Tucson DHCP3. It's ready to become the hot spare in a failover configuration. I'm going to refresh things here because Tucson DHCP3 is not showing up in the list. So you want to go up to the top DHCP node and say managed authorized servers. It's still not in that list, so I'm going to refresh it. Now it's there. And let's configure our DHCP failover. 
Great, looking good. Add the server. Hey, the server's on the list. Let's pick DHCP3. We're going to set this properties as hot standby. So failover with hot standby and the standby server gets that 5% of addresses reserved. Well, what do you know? It actually worked. There you go. You can watch the other video to see the actual testing of the failover and fail back. DHCP3 knows it's the standby server. DHCP2 knows that it is the active server. I'm going to call this a success. And thank you very much. Won't you please subscribe to Shotoku Tech? Then maybe little Bobby won't have to walk the streets. Thank you very much.